I call London my fling, but we are now four years in and even I am not buying that anymore. London is not my type. I never thought I would find this level of self-confidence attractive. I tell people that we hardly see each other and yet my clothes are strewn across his floor. I've had a toothbrush in his loo for years. Friends say, you and London, you're a thing then. And I say, no, mysteriously, not really, not seriously. And they look confused. They ask me about Leeds and I say, we're still in touch. Oh, you know us, we'll be married one day, I say, but we just want different things, but we'll uh, snap back just like that. It's sort of what we do. And I say it like I know it's true, but really I can see Leeds is moving on. He has new tattoos, new hair, a new best mate called John Lewis. And I am desperately trying to see through this because I don't know where I fit. My anecdotes are out of date. My small talk is patronizing and I never hear his news firsthand anymore. No one asks me about Manchester these days. I guess they never really understood that, but wished as well. We needed each other for a bit. He was my bit of rough. I was his safe bet. We didn't last. Didn't ask each other enough questions for that. But I hope we meet at a party in a few years and smile. Say, you look well across the buffet and mean it. But meanwhile, people are sending London and I joint Christmas cards, and I don't know how that happened. They say, how's London before how are you? I don't know, I say defensively, ask him yourself. And they do, they come back beaming from his side of the room. Oh, he's so clever. He told me about the new project, about the new cat sanctuary, come mortuary, come nightclub, come cafe. Oh, <laughs> you are really lucky. <laughs> yeah. My uh, smile is so forced, it nearly tears my face apart. And I know I need to break it up before it breaks my heart, but I get home and London has put theatre tickets on my pillow. Just spread them out in an attractive fan. And I try to resist, but I'm not sure if I can. But that night I have another dream of Leeds. It's a dirty dream. <laughs> The Yorkshire moors all speckled with purple heather freckles and in the dream I wear a flat cap that I have never owned. I walk a whippet that I have never owned. I go to a picturesque pub that I have never been to, chat to rosy locals I have never met in a tone that I have never used. Instead of a bath, I climb into a giant Yorkshire pudding and submerge myself in gravy that is definitely not vegetarian. As I dip my head under the film of fat, I wake up and London is snoring in my ear, arms around my waist, spooning me so tenderly I want to cry. I want to run back into the arms of the city I've always called mine, but Leeds hasn't called this. And London is being kind. All right, I sigh. You win, London. I like you. <laughs> you make me laugh. And I drape myself around his shoulders like a scarf. London raises one sleepy eyebrow in annoyance, saying, Erin, come on, it's laugh. <laughs> Thank you.